welcome, and we hope that today's service is a blessing and a comfort to you all. I'm going to go in and start with announcements. We have quite a few announcements today on this busy launch day and Youth Sunday and First Communion Sunday. First, thanks to all who made Youth Sunday happen. This doesn't happen by accident. Thanks to everybody, particularly Daniel and Jason and Julie and Fran and all the others who and parents who um, have your your uh, children and youth here. You'll see T-shirts today. Our the red T-shirts are for our King Street kids. That's the name for our youth in kindergarten to fifth grade. And the yams, the youth at Matt's, are wearing shirts with yams on the back. They are the middle and high school youth. That's the names of their groups, and they will help lead today. We have five who will receive communion for the first time today. When the service is completed, those five are asked to gather in the courtyard for a photograph for archives. So gather and look for Joan Holling. She'll get a photograph of the five new uh, compromands, I mean, um, rather, first communicants. We have a busy launch week. And we are paying close attention to, to Hurricane or Tropical Storm Florence. We should know in the next 12 hours a bit more what she's planning to do. Everything is on schedule for this week, but please pay attention to any emails that, we, that um, may come your way for postponements or cancellations. This is also a good time for um, updating any kind of contact information you have at the church. If you, have, if, you, if you think you may have an outdated phone number or address, let us know in case there's any, a need to get in touch with everybody. And also during this uncertain time, watch for neighbors who may live alone or who may need some help, who may not pay attention to weather reports. This is a good time to watch out for each other. So being launch week, we do have a busy week. We have uh, bells. The St. Matthew's Ringers starting tomorrow at 6 o'clock. We have the Tuesday class, which is 11 o'clock this Tuesday, noon prayer at noon. We have our monthly XYZ luncheon. It's a covered dish this week. That's at 12.30 in the parish hall. Jeff Azy was able to work with the city to secure parking on Tobacco Street during the XYZ lunch for this month and also during October. On Wednesday, we return with another year of Wham! Wednesdays at Matt's. We have supper at 6. We have a new liturgy at 6.30 called Tree of Life. At 7 o'clock, we have either Gallery Choir or Wham! Yam, which is our youth group meeting, and also a new adult Bible study. We also have a gathering during 5 o'clock hour for youth, and that's an informal time together. Faith and Friends has information in Parish News. Please take a look at that. You also have in Parish News this week a nomination insert for some of the leadership roles in the church. Please take a look at that. Also, it's Name Tag Sunday today and for the other Sundays in September. We encourage you all to wear name tags so that we can get to know each other, but also our visitors. We received 34 new folks two weeks ago, and we're still getting to know each other. There is an XYZ Supper on September 29th at 6 o'clock p.m., hosted at the home of Dick and Becky Campbell. Elizabeth Christian is also helping to host that as well. You're asked to bring a side dish or dessert to go with barbecue. The next day on Sunday, September 30th at 5 o'clock here, St. Matthews will host um, the area Lutheran churches in a conversation on immigration. Pastor Ginger Lippman Kuhn will lead that. I will assist her with that. An XYZ road trip is happening in mid-October. Details are in Parish News about that. Louis Steinke will be selling Oktoberfest tickets following worship in the courtyard today. Look for the signs. Oktoberfest is October 13th, and it's not to be missed. Also following worship today, Karen and Wally Pregnall are hosting a pool party for our Yams and Yam Parish Ed teachers. Please note the WHAM schedule in the, in the parish news. And notice also we have the return of the, the reservation form. If you would please, if you plan to, plan to come to WHAM, please fill out the reservation form and leave it in the back so that we can better plan for our meals. I think this is it. Let's see. 
thanks to all of our youth who participate, who will participate today in Youth Sunday, the musicians, the speakers, the leaders, particularly the five preachers. You will be very proud of their messages that they bring today. They are preached in only the way that each of them could preach. If you know their personalities, their messages come through. I am incredibly proud of what they've done. Finally, before we turn to worship, we received a letter from St. John's Lutheran Church in Spartanburg. Pastor Mike Shackelford is the senior pastor there. He served here some years ago. He just received news that he has some, um, some health issues and he will have surgery at MUSC in the coming weeks. Um, it, it looks as though he has um, a tumor in his mouth and there's going to be some surgery on his tongue. There's going to be um, a, at least a three-month recuperation period. So he's going to have to take a leave, but he asked that we share this news with the congregation. Keep this in mind. Keep him in your prayers. And as we receive more news here in the office, we will share it with you. I think that is all the announcements today. If there are no other announcements, let us turn our hearts to worship. Stand as you were able and face the processional cross at the entrance of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give thanks to you, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world. Calling forth life in which you took delight, through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. 
Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word, you claimed us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Live 
out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. you sent to our lives in the water and the word, that you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to pro proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls and the youth and the Alleluia Choir, please come forward for the Children of God moment. And parents, this is a good time to fill out the weekly record. Okay, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, most of us went to Lutheridge, so today we are going to sing a song for you. The song is called Your Everlasting Love.
A reading from Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you the Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Good morning. So everybody can say that they have goals, short term and long term, big and small scale. Everybody has at least something to strive for. Personally, I like to live in the moment, only make goals for what's going to happen within the next short amount of time. And yeah, that's what I said. My mom hates it. <laughs> She'll ask, like, where do you want to go to college? Well, I don't know. Well, what do you want to do for a career? I don't know. What do you want for dinner? I don't know. But I see this as quite a virtue in its own way, because it leaves behind the stress of matching for a planned schedule. The thing about setting goals in the way that I do is that there's always something that motivates that goal, like a call, if you will. For example, I recently joined the city's rowing team. It was pretty fun. I like it. Because a few of my friends were on the team and said it's fun. It is. I said that. But this was kind of a call towards joining the team. My friends being on the team, it's like, yo, it's fun. You should join. And it's like, yeah. I know this sounds corny, but this is, like a, this is my segue. <laughs> We never know when or where something will happen that guides us in another direction. But whenever those calls come, we know that something is on the way ahead of us. God is always making these calls, and we shouldn't leave them on the answering machine. People still use those, right? <laughs> God calls us towards anything and everything. That ha God calls us towards anything and everything that happens so that we can answer and be part of his great plan for us. Pick up the phone, answer the call. A reading from the Gospel of St. John. But he, had, had, but he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a Samaritan city called Sakar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was, near, was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you the living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. How do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his lots drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello there. Um, today's reading focuses on the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. We read as Jesus goes to a well while the disciples are pick off picking up supplies where he meets this woman. The Eastern Orthodox Church knows her as Saint Theotini. As the reading says, the Samaritans and the Jews were not on the best terms at the time, 
So when Jesus asks for a drink from her, she's understandably surprised. She gets the, yeah. She questions him and asks how they could get a drink as she doesn't have a way to get water up from the well. This is where we get the iconic quote on living water from Jesus. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will not thirst again. The woman takes this a bit literally, but after some hinting from Jesus, she figures out who he is and what he means. She later returns to her town and proclaims the news to others. The story is an example of one of the biggest pieces of Christianity. God's love applies to everyone. Jesus' Jesus's reaching out to the Samaritan woman was one of the first examples of God's love being shown to those outside the Jews. While Judaism was mainly about God and the Jews, Christianity branches out to, beyond that to the Gentiles and other ethnicities. This enabled the church to spread to many regions all over the world and become as large as it has today. Jesus reaches out to this woman despite her not being a Jew and despite her past fornication. God doesn't care about your past, your social status, or anything. God's love is for everyone, saint, sinner, and everything in between. So take a look at your life right now. If there's something, there's a flaw or a mistake that you're not proud of, remember that God gets it. He was human for a while too, and he loves you all the same. Thanks be to God. A reading from Acts. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he went, so he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian, an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the cadence queen of the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet of Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up and to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led into the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before his shearer, so he does not op- so he has not opened his mouth. In his hum- humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, "About whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else?" Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them. Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. The word of the Lord. Good morning. In the story of Philip and the eunuch, a eunuch was sitting on a chariot and struggled to understand scripture. Philip happened to walk by and also happened to know a lot about the word of God. He explained the passage to the eunuch. On the same night of the gathering that we heard the story of the eunuch and how God's grace changes everything, I met some people. 30,000 Lutherans started started towards the buses after the service, and although it was only the third night, I'm pretty sure everyone is exhausted, except for me, considering I had three shots of espresso. I like to sing when I get hyper, so I began singing Party in the USA on the bus. At first, it was just me, but there were two other girls on the bus who joined in. Throughout the bus ride, we sang many other things, and by the end of it, I had lost my voice and had annoyed many other people. Despite that, we met because of something we had in common, God. I don't believe in the idea that everything happens for a reason, but I do believe that you meet certain people for a reason. I also believe that everyone you meet has something to teach you or can simply be in your life to have fun with you. On both the bus and the eunuch's chariot, people were brought together because of God, and the people were happy afterwards. 
It is the little things that make you happy, like bonding over obnoxious singing on a bus or, share, or sharing your knowledge of God is where you can best see God's grace. Thank you. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things of Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and they did not find his body there. They came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish are you and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Do you see it? It's right there. The cure to that hopeless feeling many of us say we've experienced. That feeling where time seems so dark and hopeless, it's impossible to see the bright of day on the other side. Cleopas and the disciple experienced it, a time of so much grief and despair that it's impossible to even recognize hope that is standing right there, walking by you, talking to you on the road to Emmaus. A time in which death overcomes every last miracle, every last lesson, and every last blessing in action and teaching. A time in which it seems impossible to see a way in which Jesus, a man thought to be the one to save Israel, could ever possibly return as the Messiah. These times of despair make hope difficult to see, even though it's right there next to you. While at the National Youth Gathering in Houston, the St. Matthew's Youth Group had the privilege of helping out a church in need. Devastated by Hurricane Harvey, this congregation was struggling to see the light on the other side of the plywood covering the windows. Darkness will be replaced by beautiful stained glass and light will shine again. Why do we know this? Hope tells us this. God has a plan for everything and everyone. Hundreds of youth over the course of a few days dug trenches, painted fences, replaced pipe, and painted new lines and barriers in the parking lot. These youth were hope for that church who was struggling to see a way out of Harvey's destruction. Hope is always there, right there, walking right beside you, talking to you, whether you recognize it or not. Hope will always be there, as God is always there, even when we lose sight of him. So I ask you again, do you see it? It's right there. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands in, on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with, 
with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your father has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players in the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The word of the Lord. Jesus changes everything. This is probably one of the most repeated things you'll hear today while I speak, because this is one man who really has changed everything, not just for us, but for people in the past as well as the future. How has he changed everything? Well, just like what we heard from Brantley, he has woken us up, so to speak. He has spiritually opened our eyes and revived us from the mundane and dead life we had without him. How has he changed everything? He has changed it by looking into our lives and all of our sin in it and says, I took the cost of that payment when I died on the cross. Now that's a big favor. So what does he ask of us in return? He calls us to believe in him and spread his word by giving our all to his cause. Now I don't mean literally everything we have, an idea that I struggled with this summer. The cause of this internal struggle, struggle was a book named Kisses from Katie, where a young lady only a year older than me gives up her perfect life to go to Uganda and start an orphanage ministry, where she still works there today. I was so close to the answer, but I wasn't quite there. See, I had formed this idea in my mind that God was asking literally everything of us. Instead, he asked us to do our calling, to do everything in our power to occupy the position that he has given us. The best part? that no matter what the position is, you will feel unending joy as you complete his work. To spread his joy is, of course, something that we all want, but that is the last command that he has given to us. As I come to my close, I'll say this. We have all heard the age-old question of, if Jesus knocked on the door right now and asked you to follow him, would you? Obviously, we are all saying yes in our minds right now because that's what our faith has told us. Now, let me tell you the harsh reality of that question. He's been there the entire time knocking and is waiting for you to answer the door, waiting on and asking you to come to open it just so that you can be revived through his word. See, God's last command to us wasn't just to sit in our churches and listen to some guy, or in my case, some kid. It was just to go make disciples of all nations. And I believe that we are in the best nation and city to do just that. So I'm going to issue out a challenge here. When was the last time you brought someone to church? Or perhaps last time you went out and did an outreach program? So don't go back to listening to him knock on the door. Stop ignoring it. Open it up and embrace him. Thanks be to God.
Let us profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He is ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves, kneeling as you are able. Gracious God, you call your church to proclaim the love of Christ to a needy world. Embolden us to be your risen body by welcoming strangers and serving our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Creative God, small sprouts and tall trees proclaim your majesty. Give us clear eyes to see nature's beauty and wise minds to protect our home, this earth from use and harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you draw order from chaos. Watch over the nations of the world. Bless citizens and leaders who strive toward the beloved community for which you long. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you give us all that we need. When your children suffer from hunger, poverty, loneliness, persecution, injury, or illness, send generous helpers and companions. We pray especially for all in our parish prayer list and those we name now in our hearts and on our lips. Lord, in your mercy. Welcoming God, you set a table for us. Embolden this congregation to seek new ways of inviting others to the feast of all creation. Lord, in your mercy. You bless us with your throngs of saints who witness to your compassion. With gratitude, we recall the lives and deeds of those who proclaim loving kindness to a needy world. Lord, in your mercy. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O oh God, we lift up your prayers and trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us be bold and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. James and I will commune one another, and then I'm going to ask the first communicants and their families to come. And in fact, you can gather right now all in a line on the first step there, against the, the, uh, on the front, chancel steps. Then we will com, um, commune the yams and the communion assistants, and then everyone else will come forward.
Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by the signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice, may we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, by the power of spirit, you have knit these, your servants, into the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with the favor upon them and their confidence to serve in Jesus, in Christ's name. Give them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in your Christian vocation of witness to the world and serve to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, bless us and direct our days and our deeds in peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 